This is a quick video to demonstrate how to download some data from Wagda and also utilize a saving folder hier hierarchy that I've started to use in the past few months. First of all, if you don't know where Wagda is, you don't know this web address, simply Google Wagda. And the very first one is always Wagda. Click on it, and now you're back to where I started. We're going to always go to data, for the most part, I guess, almost always, Pierce County. And then the license agreement, read through that, and agree. The first layer, I'll just show you one, because this is a very quick video. Environmental layers, potential flood hazard areas. It's right here. Click on the older looking disk and save file. It automatically pops up to my lab too, which is an option. I've been toying with this idea of this is my house for all of lab two. I'm going to create a new folder and call this raw data. And I use a capital R-A-W just to make it stand out. And while I'm here, I think I'm going to put my lab two data in there. That was the extraction of this lab two zip. And then here. And now I have the raw data that's pristine. And now that it's in my directory tree up top, I can save the name of the file. And unfortunately, I took the file name away. So I'm just going to press cancel and try it again. Potential flood hazard areas. Save the file. Now it'll come back to lab 2. I just click on raw data and the flood hazard areas is listed. And this is where I think I'm going to start saving all my raw data in a raw data folder in my house for lab 2. I just click save. It says 7 minutes so I'm going to pause while it finishes. While I'm here I might as well download the land use Pierce County base map and save the file. I'm going to save it in my same raw data folder. Notice this 311 should say 312. That was a mistake by me. Make sure you don't do that. It is of course in my 312 directory. Base map into raw data. Save. And that one's done already. Now that I've got my data downloaded, I'm going to change this folder name because it was incorrect. It was probably incorrect on in the last video as well. There we go. Now I've got my 312 directory, my 312 labs, lab 2, and my raw data. Within my raw data I have lab 2 data, which I downloaded in a previous video. That was supplied by me. And I've got the, ex the expanded version of that, when I extracted it. Now I need to extract these two items right click. For me I have WinZip so I'm just going to extract to here. If you don't have WinZip you'll have to use the other method described elsewhere. Extract to here. When you do this you'll get this one takes a little while. Move that out of the way. But understand that you must extract these. We can't get to them by a through Arc Map or Arc Catalog if they are not extracted. It does work in Microsoft, but it does not work in Arc Map. And it's done extracting. We're now going to import these files. This file, Flood Hazard Areas, this file, Base Map, and the file I provided, which was Pierce, Public Transit Pierce, to the geodatabase. And to do that, I need to do it in ArcMap. So let me pull up ArcMap. I'm going to begin the process in ArcMap of importing the shapefiles into my previously made feature data set. And I don't know if you remember, but when I made this directory, I actually made a 311 labs within my 312 directory, which will work, but it's it's not 100% correct and I should definitely fix that. In addition, I 
made a connection to my lab two and I'm actually going to change that again I'm going to suggest you make one connection to your 311 labs you may have less than these by the way I have a bunch in here but we're gonna end our connection with the 311 labs so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove this connection or disconnect folder because it's incorrect I must disconnect it before I go back and fix the folder so now I'll go back to the folder here's the folder to change that I need to go to the directory and then click on it slowly change that to 312 labs because that's what we're doing and I'll just minimize that for now go back to our catalog and create a connection to a folder and again you will have less than this but you can have as many as you want and these are just connections so I'm going to connect a folder go to computer my external drive and now I have a 312 directory 312 labs I'm going to create now a 312 labs and say okay there I have it and now within 312 labs I can open it up under my folder connections lab 2 and then to my raw data where I downloaded the information right now lab 2 data shows up and within that public transit Pierce I have already moved these to my raw data folder I'm gonna try to locate the other data that I downloaded the other data that I downloaded should be in lab 2 and it should be in my raw data the reason it doesn't show up is I have not extracted it yet and you may have seen me extracted it extract it before but I didn't extract it to this new folder so let me go back flood hazard areas extract to here this might take a while notice it's taking a little bit of a while what happened was I had to go back and delete this data because I made a mistake in the video and I wanted you to see me doing it so if this is a double extraction process so be it I'm gonna pause while it finishes ah, now it's finished if I minimize this I go back to our catalog it should be in raw data now why isn't it well the reason is it doesn't refresh automatically if I right click on the folder or the data connection and say refresh and then open it back up there are the extra two shapefiles so it's okay to have a shapefile shapefile and then the shapefile in there this does not matter and the great point is when you submit your lab to canvas you're only going to be submitting your user ID folder you won't be submitting the raw data so we're saving a significant amount of space for example this is 283 megabytes now that we're saving but let's get into the process of adding shapefiles to your geo database and the feature data set it looks like I've already added them so I'm going bear with me I'm just going to delete each of these and this is how you delete them but because I want you to see the full process as I explained a couple seconds ago I made a mistake when I did it in the video and I want to make sure it's correct this is what you'll see your Pierce floods data set and we're going to import this file this file and this file into that data set data set and in the process convert them from shape files to feature classes in the directions I tell you to do it um, one way Let me scroll down here I tell you to do it by import multiple so that's what I'm going to show here I open the multiple click on the find that little button right there and let's do this one and this one since they're in the same folder raw data and say add the location of the output geo database is already set because I right clicked it I'll say okay 
this cruises along it might take a little bit they're pretty large data sets you may not see this window the first time you do it if you're following along directly with this video but I'm going to explain how you can see that video see this box it's called background processing and I'll show you as soon as this is complete it's up to 50 percent it's just wrapping up and now it's complete took me 56 seconds yours may take more or less and you actually may be doing all three files but let's get back to how to get this window to show up I'm gonna close if you go into geoprocessing options we did this in 311 towards the end this should be unchecked just like mine is yours if you check it may if you look at it it may be checked I highly suggest you uncheck it I have far fewer crashes when this is unchecked so we're turning off background processing that's why I got that dialogue and you perhaps may not or may have not although if you're watching this first you're probably turning off this check mark and you'll be right on your way let's go back and notice in Pierce floods I have the two files that I imported notice that there's a space in flood between flood and hazard and hazard in areas ArcGIS is smart enough to add an underscore in there I've just shown you the multiple I'm gonna do the last one as a single just to show you the difference in the single there's more options you input and choose the feature the same way and this time it is in the lab 2 data within my raw data folder add it's going to the Pierce floods data set and here I'm going to name the output I have to name the output feature class I'm going to give it the same name public transit Pierce that's all I have to put in I don't need an expression I don't need a field map if I clicked in the expression it would give me some information just like when I'm clicking output feature class it says the name of the output feature class another button I should would like to make you aware of is tool help this is the dialog that pops up feature class to feature class conversion and notice they're saying feature class to feature class we're actually taping a shape file to feature class and they talk about this in here so notice the multiple repeated use of the same term for something different converts a shape file to a feature class but just so you're aware remember that tool help button that will give you plenty of help as you're cruising through your lab I've completed all the boxes now this is for single again notice there is no multiple in parentheses I say okay this will take a little bit less time I believe 100% it's going to take five seconds and I'll close now and when I do you'll see that when you do a single this information or this shapefile is automatically added to the map and that's the another difference in single versus multiple when you do multiple they're not automatically added since the directions don't talk about doing the single method I'm just going to re remove it to give you the full explanation of what you're going to see in the lab that is how you add shapefiles or feature classes to a feature data set within a geodatabase.